Nick Begovich would have really enjoyed this car because it took driving to another level. If you love classic cars, then Donald loves you. Export or die. That was the saying in the UK after World War II when hard currency was really important to help rebuild the economy of the country, devastated by the expense and toll of World War II. By 1952, when this Jaguar, excuse me, Jaguar XK120 fixed head coupe was built, exports were the lifeblood of the British nation, and they had to make sure that as many of their products got into overseas hands, especially the cash-rich American hands, as possible. Helping that effort was none other than Nick Begovich. He bought this Jaguar 120M coupe, brand new in 1952, and retained it throughout his entire life. This is a car, for me, that expresses the spirit of the Jaguar post-war in its most amazing form. Everyone loves the Jaguar OTS or open two-seater because it's rakish and sporty and delightful, but what William Lyons really had in mind in creating this car was to recreate the forms of the great, beautiful, aerodynamic French Grand Tours of the 1930s. And this, the fixed head coupe, is the perfect post-war expression of that wonderful form of those great Delahays and Delages before the war. And this car, of course, was also much more than just a pretty face. It's quite interesting that the XK120 was actually created as a test bed for the new double overhead cam inline six engine, the XK engine, which would go into the Mark 7 sedan. The Mark 7 sedan was not quite ready when the engine needed to be built, so they said, well, we'll build a small run of sports cars to try out the engine. The success, of course, was immediate. And the XK120, so named for its 120 mile per hour capability, was born and triumphed. This car has the XK120M, which is the modified head similar to that used on the Jaguar C-type race cars. So it's even a more powerful version of the Jaguar XK120, which had already, at this time, set a new record for speed on a public road in Jabbeke, Belgium, in 1951. It's clear why this car appealed to Nick Begovich, a brilliant engineer and physicist. This is a car that is designed to do one thing and do one thing only, go fast comfortably. And it does that in spades. One of the only challenges with an XK120 is that its beautiful styling hides an ergonomic package which is somewhat compromised, which Jaguar realized and they worked on on the later 140 and 150 models. The steering wheel is really big and it's got sort of what looks like a heart chest opener in the center of the uh, steering column that almost guaranteed that your heart surgeon after your car accident would have a much easier job to do. Nick Begovich, being a very practical and inventive engineer, not only put in a smaller diameter wheel, but actually redesigned the hub to make it shorter and to keep the angle, the proper angle for best handling in the car. This car is delightfully original. It's had some paint work over the years, but the interior remains completely original. It's as straight and true as the day it left Brown's Lane and is truly a testament to the vision of William Lyons, his great engineers, and what the Jaguar Mark stood for. Grace, pace, and now the smaller wheel, space. Driving the Begovich XK120 fixed head coupe is literally like taking a step back in time. Especially to drive it here on these, on this very quiet one and a half lane country road. You can just imagine what the conditions were like back in the UK when this car was built and a little bit about what the experience of driving this car was like in Los Angeles in 1952 when Nick bought this car new. I already commented on the design of this car. I love the XK150 fixed head coupe, but it's also about the dynamics. For the early 1950s, this is an absolute revelation in British sports cars. The solidity, the power, the precision is absolutely astonishing 
And when you think about the fact, of course, that all Jaguars were built to a price, it becomes even more amazing. And you can certainly see how Nick Begovich would have really enjoyed this car because it took driving to another level. Most of the cars of that time did not have this kind of performance, did not have this kind of road holding, and combined with this build quality, this incredible uh, wood veneered dashboard, the great black faced gauges, and of course, Nick Begovich was nothing if not practical because he liked things to work the way they should. And one of the biggest challenges, frankly, of, of driving an XK120 uh, for me and for a lot of other people is the fact that the original steering wheel is so big. You have the choice of steering and using the pedals or shifting, generally not all three at once. Nick installed this beautiful nardy wood rimmed wheel to make the XK120 a little more comfortable to drive. And it's a handy thing. And it's something that we're not gonna change because that's part of Nick Begovich's influence on this car. And it connects us directly to the man who built this collection. Classics are great things. Classics that can be driven and enjoyed are even better. And while Nick Begovich didn't drive this car very much, for a 1952 car with 28,000 miles on the clock, it's absolutely extraordinary. It's had one repaint in its original colors and the seats, the interiors, delightfully original. Absolutely wonderful the way this leather feels and smells. Every car has its unique smell and this car has a wonderful smell of old England. I think that Nick Begovich is smiling to know that his beloved 120 fixed head coupe is alive and well and about to be enjoyed by thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Because it's a really amazing car. If you've never driven an XK120 or any Jaguar this period, you would be amazed because it feels so incredibly modern. The ride is superb. The handling, as I mentioned before, is absolutely fantastic. The power immediate. The XKE is a spectacular car, but in order to really understand and appreciate the XKE, you have to know where it came from. And the fact that William Lyons had the idea for this car and built this car in the early 50s, from, from designs that started in the late 40s, is astonishing. I'm fortunate enough to own a 1953 Jaguar Mark VII sedan, or saloon as they would have called it, the car for which the great XK engine was intended. They only built the XK120s originally as a test bed for the Mark VII engine. And its success led to this dynasty of great sports cars. And for that, we can be extremely fortunate.